questions or if you have uh, any comments, go ahead. Now this week, <clears throat> I discovered in doing forgiveness, not, I guess it was part of my rejection that I've been dealing with at my work for the last couple of weeks. And um, what I discovered is that when I went through the forgiveness prayer, uh -huh. forgave the other person, forgave myself, and then um, the caveat to it was that I prayed a blessing over them. And I haven't always done that. Um, that and what I've do done for myself, I mean, initially it was like, as soon as I would forgive them, I'd set myself free of it. Right. But then, and then I'd set myself, or I'd be not so attached to them or their opinion of me. But um, then this week I started doing bless them. Mm -hmm. So after the forgiveness of them and myself, then I did bless them. And I found that very surprisingly more free. Yeah. Because it was like, oh yeah. As much as it is about me and my thinking, it's um it's funny how you say it. It's like it's all about me and my heart and my interaction. It's not about them. And that's part of that spiritual warfare. It's about their spirit, their spirit, and my war with their spirit, not with them. And then to add and bless you, it was a big deal for me. That's Amen. When, when you pray a blessing over people, when you, particularly as you're forgiving someone, as you, um, because then you're getting rid of any bitterness at all. You know, there's, there's no way to retain bitterness and for, for me to retain bitterness and be praying for you and Father bless them and bless their efforts and bless their life and you just can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to say, um, and I have started thanking God for it mm -hmm. and for whatever the situation is because something good's going to come Yeah, only good thanks can come from praise, yeah. you what? Right. Thanks and praise. Yeah, thanks and praise. Only good can come from that if you're Praying blessings over someone and thanking the Lord for them and for their involvement in your life, and then there's absolutely no bitterness can be held. Go ahead. Um, whenever you say the prayer um, and Spirit tell me the truth about the situation, is that the replacing part? Yeah, well, that is part of the replacing part, yes. But you're also asking, literally asking the Holy Spirit to tell you the truth about the matter and often what will happen is you pray that prayer is Holy Spirit will say you'll hear a message like yeah you are forgiven or um, you, you also need to pray about this right or people will see a, a bird set free or see a rainbow whatever um, Holy Spirit wants to talk to you and wants to be part of your life and so that's what you're asking for is for the truth Holy Spirit is to be our counselor and our teacher and so as you're asking for the truth and for revelation, then often what happens is you get the message of what you should be praying about next. Okay. Or like um, the ladies were just saying about pray a blessing over the person and because that just further uh, progresses your forgiveness and prevents any bitterness, anything like that. And so... I was going to say, and you, especially when I am asking um, I'm forgiving myself, I'll ask him to, in that Holy Spirit tell me your truth to fill the place or to replace the lie in me and so the scripture then when I you know if I'm forgiving myself for getting mad and um, then I ask Holy Spirit to tell me the truth and God tells me you know, or, um, uh, you're, you're the apple of my eye or something like that I love them just as much as I love you. Whatever he tells me is his truth, then I speak that whenever I get tempted to be bitter again at that same person if that makes sense. Oh, look. Thank you, Kendra. Mm -hmm. Leo, how are you, my friend? Good. You, you guys no longer have to imagine, if you will, the slides. Um, <laughs> Miss Kathy actually Yay, figured Kathy. it out. Yay, Kathy! Yay, Kathy! Yay! 
Go ahead, Leo. Is it, um, what if he tells you when you ask, you know, tell me the truth, it was like, that was your fault. What happened, you were offended by them, but you were egging them on. You knew that that would cause that reaction. And you sure. I mean, because it seems like sometimes that he would go, you know you, walked around, you, you know you set them off on purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah, Leo, quit acting up. Don't do that some more. Um, I mean, that's a good question. What happens if Holy Spirit says, hey, you're messing up? You say hallelujah, yes. right? I mean, literally, because that's the purpose of the prayer. Holy Spirit, tell me your truth. And if Holy Spirit says, hey, David, you're being a jerk. Straighten up. You go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me, I repent. Right? I mean, that's, that's the whole idea. And if Holy Spirit tells you you're messing up, then that tells you the next prayer that you need to do. And the next prayer is, I repent, I forgive me, and I forgive myself. And then don't do it anymore, right? <laughs> don't do it anymore. That's literally, that's what repent means, is to turn and go the other direction and don't do that some more, right? And so if Heavenly Father's telling you to repent and to not do it again, then don't do it again. You, you repent, you pray through it, you forgive, ask for forgiveness, you forgive, and then you turn away and, and don't do it again. And if you do it again, you just repent again. Yeah, yeah. Better. Right. 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 Sadly, none of us purpose, none of us perfectly achieve the, the turning and uh, going in another direction, but that is the goal. I feel like when I hear Holy Spirit speaking about, is that when I'm when it's like I'm Your love is punishing. Your, your type of love, that your, the love you're showing is a punishing kind of love. When it, I hear that kind of a correction from the Father, from Holy Spirit, it comes with a, wow, I am. It, if it comes with condemnation, shame and guilt, many times for me it's from the enemy. And so like if I hear and after my prayer, if I hear like, you're so stupid, yeah. or you're never going to get this, that is a condemnation voice. That is the accuser's voice in a prayer. So it's spending that time in his presence so that you're aware of is this a, is this a condemnation or is the Father correcting me? And because it doesn't feel good to be corrected. <laughs> so it's like just, you know, so you know what I say is that what's so great about that, Leo, is that, you, you know, don't you worry, honey, you'll have another chance. <laughs> you'll get another chance. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll you'll work in that. You know, you work in it with your relationship with the Father, co-laboring with him, and show it to you. Yeah. Trust him in that. Yeah. As Cindy was saying, that's... Um, if, if it's from the Father or from Holy Spirit, most often you immediately recognize and go, yeah, I am. Yeah. The reason I asked that was because it seems like you can be like, how come I always have a problem with that person? How come they're, they're always like, it's like, oh. <clears throat> uh, Jesus can go, uh, you realize you like setting them off? You enjoy watching them go up the smokes? <coughs> you need to quit that because you're supposed to be presenting me, not enjoying watching Sister right. Sally go through the roof. Right. Um, and maybe you, this other stuff would calm down if you didn't keep setting fires. Um, that sort of, I, not not so much now, but I knew I've been around people that was like, boy, they, they seem to just do that. And, that's, and then when you're like, well, you you kind of play into it too. You realize, you know, you hand them the matches. Right. That, that sort of, the Holy Spirit can, we want to be able to be free of this stuff, not just put out, you know, Amen. So Janice talks about, um, was she Robert, for those of you who don't know, Janice is another teacher here and one of the counselors, but she talks about Robert, her husband, and Lord, how many times am I going to have to forgive him for this? How many times? How many times? And Heavenly Father told her one day, when you stop judging him. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. There's that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, as Cindy was saying, um, depending upon where the answer comes from, you look at the characteristics, the nature, if it's a loving, correcting, non-condemning, 
but a Leo, you need to look in this area, Dave, you need to look at, then that's coming from our father. But if it's a condemnation and a, yeah, you're always screwing up and you're, you are a mess up, then, then you want to look, that's coming from the enemy's camp. And uh, so that's the other important po point there. Kathy, am I doing something wrong that the thing doesn't work? The clicker? Just use the button. Then. No. Yeah. It should work. Mm -mm. It's not. Just use your. Just use. Yeah, it. I'll just push the button. Yeah. I don't think it's working. So the important thing to know. Uh, again, we're not going through and and uh, we're not going through and, and doing uh, a complete refresher. But part of Jesus' ministry is that he came to set the captives free from all types of bondage that kept us prisoners, physical and mental bondage. So tonight we're going to um, review how to be free of fear. And fear literally um, is a bondage and there is chains that keeps people bound up, particularly right now as we watch the pandemic and um, the fear that people are in over our uh, current situation that's uh, a bondage that is keeping people down. So we talked about principalities and rulers of darkness and um, the enemy's camp. Well, these are the principalities that the enemy has. And it starts always with unbelief, always with unbelief. The enemy always wants to attack our, uh, our belief and our foundation of our faith, always where the enemy attacks. It's where he attacked in the garden, you know, he comes at Eve and, did God really say? And he starts getting me doubting what God said. From unbelief, often fear is one of the first areas that the enemy attacks because fear, as we cover tonight, you'll find is the opposite of belief, right? Because if you have a strong belief and if you know that you know that you know that God's there, that he's got it, that he wants the best for you, what do we have to fear, right? What do we have to fear? And so fear is one of the tools that the enemy uses because he wants to take away your belief. Also uses rejection, makes people feel rejected, not wanted. One of the worst um, human emotions that you can experience. Bitterness and unforgiveness towards others, bitterness towards yourself, unforgiveness to yourself, um, jealousy and envy. Um, <coughs> all the principalities in the areas where the enemy wants to attack us. So as I'm trying to think of a way to explain the principalities and the, um, the accusers and how they want to attack us, picture yourself at a used car lot. <laughs> picture yourself at a used car lot. Has anyone ever seen this experience, right? As you pull up and there are 14 used car salesmen standing there waiting to pounce upon you, right? And by the laughter and by the smiles, I can see that every one of you has, uh, has experienced this. And all of these are the different principalities and rulers. <laughs> In their suits. <laughs> yeah. And, and as you roll up, one of them in an especially nice plaid jacket that he got down at the uh, club, well, you know? Yeah. That was in style back then. That was in style back in the day. But he has a really nice, shiny, really nice, shiny fear mobile that he will trade you for your shalom mobile, right? Trade you for your shalom mobile. Um, as the saying goes, a shaft is bent, the rear end leaks, you can fix a quick with a noisy rag, use an elbow starter, a lost key. Don't pay your mind with that word and sound too little, but that's not that shit here. Shit here, <laughs> right? So that's what he's wanting to trade you. <coughs> What's what? Slow down. Slow down. Yeah, I said I didn't hear a single word you said. Said her shaft is bent, but the rear end leaks. You can fix her quick with an oily rag. Use a nail to start her. I lost key. Don't pay no mind to that whirring sound. She a little oil, but outside that, she cheery. She cheery. So <laughs> it's a used, used car thing. The, the problem is that people think that, the, and this was literally the example that I was planning on using as an accusing spirit example, but then as I'm praying about it, I come to the realization that if someone come up to you dressed like that and wanting to trade you a fear mobile for your shalom mobile, surely all of us would be bright enough to go, mm, yeah, I don't think so, right? I don't think so. The enemy is um, sly in his ways, 
and he's obvious in his ways, but he's subtle enough that, I mean, if it was always like this, we wouldn't fall for it, right? We wouldn't fall for it so much. Um, as we talk about the, the enemy doesn't uh, come and say, fall down and worship me and let me be your God. Because that's obvious, right? If Satan comes to you and said, let me be your God, you go, yeah, get out of here. But he comes and goes, yeah, but I, I, you deserve it. It could be yours. You, you. And you start worshiping I. And the same thing goes here. Far more subtle than the slimy sec secondhand car dealer. Far more subtle. Right? Far more so. Not, oh, you should be panicked about, but what well, yeah, you should be concerned about. You know, it's okay to be a little worried about. Or, you know, it, it, you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not in fear. You're just, you're concerned. Or you're worried. Or you're, you're spending too much time. You're what? Stressed. You're stressed. Just a little stressed. A little wrapped up. Right? And so that's how the enemy gets his foothold in. It's far more subtle than the slimy secondhand um, salesman that we all think about. And I think that's important to, to know because, um, again, there is a battle for our mind. Go ahead, Toby. It's interesting, Dave. Today I was listening to an online news magazine. Uh -huh. And the guy, um, he says, you know, he was naming a, a politician of a state. And he said... Well, this, this person is, um, there's a demon operating in this person. And when they're done operating, going to move on to the next soul or the next person, that leaves the door open. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing to hear it on an online news magazine. Yeah. That the commentator made that remark. I was like, wow, what? What kind of world am I now living in? But it was pretty amazing, wasn't it? It's exactly what happens. I mean, with a demon uh, is uh, is waiting to enter someone that's um, that leaves that door open, yep. leaves that foothold. Yep, and if you leave the door open, the demon wants to go ahead. And demons don't want to be out there on their own, right? They don't want to be out there on their own. They want to be in a nice, warm place. They want to be inside, which is why it's important, as we talked about, as you're praying, to fill the vacant place when you kick a demon out, fill it with Holy Spirit so that he can't return with seven more evil than he was. Right? So um, we're going to chapter 10, which is fear. Isaiah 26, 3 tells us he gives peace to those whose minds are stayed on thee. If your mind is focused on God, you have peace. Right? And that's, that's what the verse is telling you. Whose minds are stayed on thee. It's talking about focus your mind. You're supposed to take every thought. We want to take every thought captive to God's word. And we want to have it line up with God's word. And we want to be thinking about our God. So, <coughs> definitions of uh, fear. Uh, an emotion of feeling afraid, danger, uneasiness, anxious thoughts. The synonyms are worried, stressed, anxious, as we talked about, because a lot of people don't, oh, I'm not, I'm in fear. They, they don't want to say that. They're, oh, I'm a little stressed. I'm a little anxious. I'm a little um, whatever. All of it's fear. All of it's fear. Fear can be a warning, as I said. You know, our, our father warns us if we're um, walking up to a cliff to fall off or, you know, someone's about to attack us. Fear can be a good thing. God gave us fear for a reason. We also uh, can have fear or reverence of God. We are told to have fear or reverence of God. Not to be afraid and cowering and awe, oh, but we are to be fearful and reverent of our God. And we should be fearful. You know, uh, the, uh, when the um, Israelites were coming out of Egypt and they started violating time and time and time again when the golden calf was made, 300 died over the golden calf like that, right? Because we were told that we were to follow our Father and to honor Him and to obey His laws and His rules. So it is good to have a fear or a reverence of our God, but we don't have to be frightened to death of Him. God gave us fear to help. Satan uses fear to hurt us. 
Satan uses everything to hurt us. He, he doesn't want to do anything for our good. Um, if you read the book, the book that we're talking about, Biblical Foundations of Freedom, Art Matthias, the um, man who wrote the book, had a series of episodes of his life, had a bad snowmobile wreck um, where he was seriously injured. Then um, his body started just breaking down and turning on itself, turning in against itself. He became allergic to about everything on earth. And literally, his doctors are telling him he's going to die. And Art gets talking to his sister who had found um, forgiveness and repentance through um, the study of the Bible, talked to him about it. Art starts forgiving and repenting for his bitterness, getting rid of bitterness, and all of a sudden his body starts healing when he's getting rid of fear. And uh, that's kind of the start of all of this for Art at least and for the classes that we teach here. Is, as he got rid of fear, his body started healing. Um, either Kendra or Toby mentioned earlier about fear and, and just it causing physical manifestations, and it, and it does. And bitterness eating away at, the, at our bones, which is beside the, the most important part of these things is it interferes with our relationship with our Father. And we don't want anything interfering with our relationship with our Father, or at least I don't. Um, but it also has physical manifestations against us, and it can hurt us and our bodies, which is to be a temple of God. And so we want to be rid of it. One of the things that um, I, just, I learned when I came here, and it just related to art, was that um, his, the, the revelation, the verse in Revelation that says that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, that his sister's testimony, when she spoke it to him, that as she forgave, that she was healed of cancer, that that testimony went out to Art, and Art picked that up because, and he used that in his own life, and then God healed him. And so the testimony means do it again. And so the Father wants us to be speaking our testimony. He wants us to be sharing with people about what he's done for us, how he's healed us, either physically or our heart, you know, whatever those pieces are, so that, um, he can, we can demonstrate who he is and to hope with it to other people. And so you can see how that thread went through Art's sister and then to him and what that did and how it exploded into the ministry it is today. So that's really powerful. Yeah, it is really powerful. Well, that's one of the reasons that we always ask about testimonies and why we share testimonies and why it's important to share testimonies as we go along um, is because it is doing it again, and it's healing again. Can I was going to say, and what, another really interesting thing I loved when I heard uh, Art tell his own story was that at first, he didn't really believe it. He thought, oh, this hogwash is <laughs> But he tried it because he was desperate right. to feel better and to receive healing in his body. And then he noticed that as he tried it, it worked. And so he did it again. He did it again. <clears throat> That really spoke to me because there are so many things that you know we hear. I hear and at first I'm like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> no way. But it's in obedience. The obedience. Yeah. First, mm -hmm. you know, God wants us to just give him a try. Yep. Give him a try. And Cindy talked about earlier with. Um, Leo's prayer about don't worry buddy you'll get a chance to do it again and I mean our God is the God of second and third and fourth and fifth and yeah you know seven times 70 chances um, when, when we talk about long suffering our God is a God of long suffering long suffering is not the sitting back and oh I've been suffering so long oh how long must I suffer <laughs> right it's waiting patiently waiting patiently. When you, when you read the, the story about the prodigal son and the father sees the prodigal son returning way down the road, that's long suffering. The father wasn't sitting and doing his business. He was looking out the window, looking for his son to come home. Right? Looking for his son to come home. I know my son's going to come home. I know he's going to come home. My son's going to come home. And the father's looking out the window. Oh, I, I get in trouble because I walk away from the camera. Sorry. I'm, for those online, I'm looking out the window. Because that's what our father does. When we walk offline, our father's looking out the window going, come on, David, come back to me. Come on. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come back. And that's what our Father does, and that's what long suffering is. And fortunately, that's our God who gives us chance after chance after chance after chance. And we get a chance to do it again, and we try and do better each time, right? That's what we try and do. So, um, proper fear is reverence. Proverbs 1 7 tells us the fear of Jehovah is the beginning or the best of knowledge, it's discernment and understanding. But the foolish, one who mocks when guilty or is quarrelsome, despises wisdom and instruction. We don't want to be the foolish one who despises wisdom or destruction. <clears throat> so the definition of fear in the Greek is afraid, alarmed, or fearful. And Dilius is to be fearful, is to be faithless. Which again, we're talking about fear is the opposite of faith. God's definition is just that. Fear is the opposite of faith, which is sinful. If, if we're not having faith, if we're not putting our faith in God, then it's sinful. Fear and faith are equal, and one can always, will always replace the other. If you are fearful and you pray away the fear and fill it with faith, the fear's gone, right? You're rid of the fear. But if you're full of fear, faith is gone. Because they cannot coexist. They cannot coexist. They're equal. So where's your focus is the important thing. Where's your focus? Where do you place your trust? Psalm 56, 11 says, In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do from, to me, do unto me. And what can man do to, to us? Right? Jesus has already defeated death. The worst that man can do is take our life. And Jesus has already defeated death. And if Jesus is going to meet us when we die, what can man do to us? Absolutely. Nothing. If you know where you're going, what's if you know where you're going, you know, if you know where you're going, yeah, um, it's important to know where you're going because whether by the undertaker or the overtaker, we are all going to meet our maker, right? I mean, we are. And so it's important to know where you're going and then you don't have to be afraid. You just don't have to be afraid. Put your trust in God. Psalm 34, 4 and 5, I sought the Lord, he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my fears. You what? I was just going to say, you know, uh, I used to think that fear was just something that happened to me. Like I'd be in a situation and I, you, your heart starts pounding. And, you know, a lot of people that say I have anxiety. This is a real thing. Your heart starts pounding. And oh, it yeah. It feels like an anxiety attack. But the truth is in the word that fear is a spirit. It's an accusing spirit. It's a principality. And it doesn't just happen to me. I choose it when I grasp that. And this is a really good example of um, replacing the lie with the truth. Because in those moments when my heart's pounding and I get really afraid and I'm confronted or something like that, if I can stop and say, no, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And even if that's all I can say, and a lot of times it is, Jesus, I trust. Over and over and over. Over and over and over. But if my heart starts to settle down, right. and I calm down and the fear subsides. But it's a process yep. of applying his truth to my to the emotional the, the emotions I'm feeling. Yep. And the thought that came before it. And the thought that came before it. And I think it's actually, I had a situation this week I, um, where you can know the truth, you can know what you need to do, but until you actually put it in that action with the prayer or uh, with your declaration, it's not going to happen for you. Right. Just knowing it isn't going to do it. You've got to actually put it in the action. Amen. Amen. So I wasn't here the week before you talked, right? I, I, I wasn't here for that. Um, I was probably already on my way to Iowa to go hunting. Um, but Cindy told me that your slides didn't work and that you had to teach without having your slides. Well, no, my, um, I saved the wrong slides. Okay. So when, when you get up here to teach, 
And like I say, I wasn't here. But you got up to teach and all of a sudden realized that your slides aren't there. That accusing spirit is immediately there wanting to smack you and, and cause that heart rate. And telling what is to be Right, right. <laughs> and, I mean, that's a real life example. You know, it doesn't matter that you're up here teaching or that, you know, the, what, Cindy and I are both uh, counselors here or do the one on one counseling. Does that mean that the accusing spirits don't attack and immediately want to come beat you up? No, the second that you were up here and you found your slides missing, they're wanting to beat you up, right? Absolutely. And so you have a choice of either lock it up and get intense and, oh, I'm the stupidest person, I can't even remember what to say, or you say, that's just not true, right? Mm -hmm. That's just not true. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, we can do this together. That's right. That's right. Holy Spirit, speak yes. through me. And it's funny, Cindy and I talk, uh, the, the best lessons that we ever do are the ones that we are totally unprepared for, and we come in and go, Holy Spirit, I just don't feel comfortable with this. You're going to have to do this one. And you, know, you just stand up, Holy Spirit starts speaking. And that's what it's about. That's where you, where you replace the fear with the faith, right? And w did the class go okay for you? Two weeks ago? Really Cindy said it went really well for you. It went really well. The Holy Spirit, he, he's in charge anyway. We're just the mouthpiece. Right? Set her in. And so that's, that's the important part to realize. He's in charge anyway. Right? Our Father's in charge, and if we're looking for God's kingdom and to serve God's kingdom, what can man do to us? And it's okay. Right? And so, just what Kenda and Toby were saying, okay, settle down hard. Holy Spirit, take over. Help me. Okay, let's go. Let's do a class. And so, um, that, that's where the fear and faith come together. So uh, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of all things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen yet. Not seen yet. That's what faith is. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about what faith is. What's faith look like? Um, Hebrews 3 tells us we understand the entire universe, universe was formed by God's command. That's um, what we now see. It didn't come from anything, it came from God's command. That's what faith is, knowing that God commanded it into existence. By faith, Abel brought God the best offering, a better offering than Cain did, because um, he was putting his faith in God over and giving the best offering. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he didn't have to experience death. Right? Enoch's one of the two who didn't experience death. Hebrews 11. Hebrews is the book of faith, by the way. Um, Hebrews, if you read Hebrews over and over and over, it says, by faith, by faith, by faith. This is what faith is, by faith. Hebrews is the book of faith. Without faith, Hebrews 11 tells us it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Go ahead, Toby. You know, uh, f fear is is one of my stumbling blocks um, in my life. And, you know, I'm not like 20 years old. So. You're not? <laughs> but um, how it's helped to me with um, whenever I see uh, faith is trust. Um, and it's me trusting God. Um, so a lot of times I'll replace the word faith with the word trust. And it, it really helps me. To, to keep um, um, keep my eyes on the Lord uh, with the, um, replace the word faith because sometimes faith is kind of a vague word um, but trust is not so vague it's more con it's concrete for me more concrete for you mm -hmm. come on in bud <clears throat> yeah faith trust they they are the same things what what you put your hope in is the other thing what you put your hope in because that's where our faith is by faith noah when warned of things not yet seen and holy fear built the ark to save his family but his by his faith he condemned the world and became heir to righteousness that is in keeping with faith when god come and told moses i'm about to flood the world and you need to build an ark or i said moses noah excuse me noah literally had to go okay what's an ark Right? What's an ark? I don't know what an ark is. 
He gets dimensions for an ark. He starts building an ark. And you, can you imagine he's in the middle of the desert? His neighbors come by. What are you doing, fool? What are you doing? It would take a great deal of faith for years. He didn't get the ark built in a week, right? It took more than a week. It took years, literally years, to build the ark with his neighbors coming by and mocking him and teasing him and what kind of foolish thing are you doing building an ark in the middle of the desert, right? But by faith, Noah built the ark. God told him to do it. Okay, didn't make sense, but he built an ark. He built an ark. And fear, the accusing spirits, would try and be beating you up and saying, you know, do you really want to be doing this? Noah says, yeah, he put his faith in God, and that's what we want to do. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive his inheritance, he went, even though he didn't know where he was going, right? Abraham had no clue where he was going. God said, pack up, son, let's go. Okay, Father, and he packed up and he went. That's faith. By faith, he made his home in the promised land as a stranger. In a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were the heirs to the same promise. By faith, Sarah, who was beyond age of giving birth, bore a child for Abraham because of the promise of our father. Matthew 8, 5 to 10, Jesus talks about faith like this I have not seen. When the commander comes before him and says, my servant is sick, my servant is sick, I don't deserve to have you in my home. You don't have to come to my home. Say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, I, no faith have I seen like this. Faith in action, Matthew 8, 20. We'll get off of faith um, here in just a minute and cover some more of the fear, but faith is incredibly important. The woman who was hemorrhaging had suffered hemorrhages all of her life. For years she had been bleeding. And she sees Jesus, and she knows if she can just touch his robe, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. That's faith. Sneaking up behind him and touching his robe to find healing. And Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Right? That's faith. That's the opposite of fear. Fear, the accusing spirits would say, oh, you, you can't go up and touch the rabbi's coat. You, you, can't, you can't go touch the rabbi. Right? And faith says, oh, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, I can. And she ran up and, and touched the coat. Jesus turned and told her um, that she was healed. Just a few verses later, um, windstorm, Jesus is in the boat with the apostles. They're crossing the um, sea, and horrible storm comes up. They're scared to death. Fishermen who have been fishing all their life, they've been through storms. This is a bad storm, right? They are scared to death, and they go wake Jesus up and say, don't you realize we're perishing? And he's like, where's your faith? And he gets up and goes, be calm, be still, knock it off, knock it off. And goes back down He talks to his voice, right? By faith. And faith is incredibly important to us so we don't suffer fear. Fear that we talk about... Um, as I'm studying about uh, Moses and um, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and the fear that was involved there, the first one that comes to me is Moses', um, the Pharaoh first, orders all, the baby, all male babies be killed. Says to the Hebrew midwives, if you go to deliver a child and it's a male child, kill it. Kill it, because there were too many Hebrews being born. And he's afraid of the Hebrews, says, kill the child. The midwives don't obey because they fear God more than they fear Pharaoh. That's, that's a good thing, right? So they deliver children and they don't kill them. And Pharaoh goes, hey, what's going on? How come there's so many male children? So, all those Hebrew women, they're tough. They're tough. They're not like the Egyptian women. They, they have babies before we get there. And so babies are born. And God blessed, the Bible says that God blessed those midwives and made them more fruitful because they honored God. So good. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't give in to fear, they honored God. So the next area of fear that had to be overcome 
And Moses was spared because the midwives um, had the, the male children delivered. And um, he later led the children out of Egypt, right? Out of Egypt. Moses' sister, if you read the scripture when the midwives are delivering babies and Moses' mother puts him in the, in the uh, Nile to float over to the Pharaoh's uh, daughter, Moses' sister follows the baby and is taken through the weeds. Now there's got to be some fear involved sneaking up on the Pharaoh's daughter, on the princess, in her bathing area, right? That could probably get you killed back in the days of Egypt. But she's hanging out and watching and waiting for the princess to see the baby. And when she does, out of the reeds pops this little girl and says, do you want me to go find a Hebrew woman to nurse this child for you? <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> They're accusing spirits again or saying, don't do that. But she did. And what's the princess saying? Yeah, that'd be a good thing. So she goes and gets Moses' mother to nurse her own baby. And scripture tells us that the mother was paid to nurse her own baby instead of killing the baby, right? Mother gets paid to nurse the baby. Again, because not allowing fear to control our life, but to doing what our father wants us to do. What our father wants us to do. So we'll move forward a little bit. Um, Moses, when he leads the children of Israel out of Egypt, and takes them to Mount Sinai. God calls them to meet up on Mount Sinai. He has three meetings with Moses on Mount Sinai. It was spectacular, right? Spectacular thunder and lightning and earthquakes and the ground rolling. And when Moses comes back, he's so bright, he has to wear a veil over his face to cover the glory of God. It was spectacular. A cool, cool event. God tells Moses to gather the children of Egypt, of Israel, around the base of Mount Sinai because he's going to address them individually. He is going to come and meet with them individually. If you had an invite that said, God is going to be in the auditorium at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, would you be here at 7 o'clock in the morning? 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning. You'd be here, yeah, right? 30. You'd be here at 4 to be in line. But accusing spirits come to the children of Israel who have just been delivered out of Egypt, who have been delivered out of bondage, out of slavery, have been set free, and say, ooh, you need to be afraid of this guy, right? You need to be scared of this guy. And they listened to accusing spirits and said to Moses, you, you talk to God. You talk to God. You listen to what he has to say, and you come and tell us because we're afraid of him. And the entire God's chosen people, because they said yes to fear, missed the opportunity to hear his voice and meet him personally. And meet him personally. And scripture tells us over and over, the most often command given in scripture is fear not. Do not be afraid. And that's the whole crux of this message. That's the whole crux of this message. <laughs> That, that is the whole crux of this message. If you allow fear, if you allow the accusing spirit of fear to stop you from doing what God gives you an opportunity to do, you miss everything. You miss everything. Go ahead. I was reading um, that do not afraid or do not be afraid is written in the Bible 365 times, and there's like 365 days in a year. So that's yeah, I, that, that's something that's often put on the internet, and I, I don't think that it's true. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of those things that people like to put on the internet. I I think if you go through a new account, I don't think that there's one for every day of the year. But it is the most often given command in Scripture: fear not. The other important thing, it, it's very important to note, Kenda said it succinctly, I missed the opportunity that God wants to give me. But the other important thing, most of the time when we are told fear not, good news is following, right? 
good news is following. When we were told, fear not, when, when the angel appeared to Mary and told her she was about to have the Savior of the world, what did what he say? Fear not, because Mary was fearful. Fear not, you're about to be blessed and be the mother of the Savior of the earth. Fear not. Right? Yeah, because Mary, if she wasn't a virgin when she got married, that's what her fear was. Absolutely. Um, because she'd be stoned. Absolutely. And that's a huge fear Absolutely. that a, a normal woman would have in that day. Absolutely. That you don't want to be um, stoned to death. Absolutely. Um, so that was her fear. Um, but Absolutely. And every one of us has very reasonable or can have very reasonable fears. Two weeks ago, when your slides didn't pop up, would it have been very reasonable to lock up and not be able to give the presentation? Sure. Sure. Just like being afraid of being stoned. Sure. Absolutely. And we all have those fears. And they can all be very easily, oh, well, I could be stoned to death. Oh, I, people could mock me. People could make fun of me. People could, they could all be very real. Or we can do what we're called to do, and that is set our side of fear aside and to have faith and to move forward. And we see have, what the Lord does. And that's what in the Lord does. your situation is something to be excited about. That's exactly right. Gives you something to be excited about. I think Go another ahead. bad thing is, like I'm looking at my own life, and I think I always uh, pay extra attention to this, uh, this chapter. And so, I look at my own fears and in my past when these fears had destroyed certain opportunities, then I replace that fear with regret. Yep. So it goes from one bad to another because not only did I lose out on this great opportunity because of my own personal fears, but now I'm living in this regret and it's just kind of paralyzing. It is. It is paralyzing. So by now, we're, we're an hour into this. Yes, Miss Kathy. That that is that's when we miss out on, on an opportunity, we will get another chance. He want he wants us to grow faith. So when we miss out on a fear, he's a god of cycles and patterns. He'll bring opportunities back around so that you can choose better. Yeah. True that. Yeah. Choose the fearless way this time. Yeah, I remember Janice saying too, and Kathy, maybe you know where this was the source of this, but. Um, heard you say it too that failure is built into the plan yes yes yeah. we're not mm -hmm. perfect and god knows that we're going to fail he always yeah. did that's why he issued that's why the, there was the plan for yeshua and right. so in every step of our journey it's a try succeed or try fail try again succeed but it's a it's a pattern it's you bet pattern. And so right now we're an hour into this and my wife is sitting looking at me going, Dave, you have to pray together. <laughs> I was thinking that same thing. Yeah. Brother, <laughs> have, have no fear. Yeah, I have no fear. I can tell it. It's coming. <laughs> so it never could. Surely by now each of us has thought of a fear that has rocked our lives or that does rock our lives. And what I'd like to do is demonstrate how to get rid of that fear, how to repent for it and um, how to be rid of it. If you haven't experienced it, pray for those of us who have. Trust me, we, all, we, need, we need your prayer. We come to your prayer. So can I leave you in a prayer of repentance for fear? Yeah? So repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Lord, forgive me for my fear. Lord, forgive me for my fear. And be specific. Talk to him about what that fear is. Under your breast fire. Lord, I purpose and choose to forgive myself. Lord, I purpose and choose to forgive myself. In the name of Yeshua and by the power of his blood. In the name of Yeshua and by the power of his blood. I cancel all of Satan's power and authority over me in this I cancel all of Satan's power and authority over me in this memory. Holy Spirit, heal my heart and tell me your truth about this. Holy Spirit, heal my heart and tell me your truth about 
Well, let's see, let's see what he has to say to you. Go ahead. And that's absolutely true. If God is with us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? So why was Moses not frightened? Is the important message, an important part of this. Why, why was Moses, I mean, he met with God three times on the mountain. The mountain shook, right? The mountain shook, the clouds, the storm, the fire that doesn't consume the bush. Why wouldn't he afraid? It's important to know because he spent time in God's presence which is exactly what you were just saying. And the, the message that just came to you, spend time in God's presence. If you spend time in God's presence, you don't have the fear or the faithlessness because God will build your faith, right? Spend time in God's presence. Follow God's laws, right? We're to have a healthy respect of God and a fear and a reverence of God. We're to follow his laws. And if you follow his laws, you have absolutely nothing to fear of God. He is on your side, and he's with you, right? Moses followed God's laws, so he wasn't afraid of it. Moses talked with God face-to-face -face like his friend, right? Two people referred to in Scripture as being God's friend, Abraham and Moses. They personally sat down with God face-to-face -face and talked with him like a friend. Go ahead, Ken. I think what's really beautiful and interesting and very human about that story is that the first conversation that Moses had with God, he was afraid. Oh, he was afraid of death. He would say, uh, no, surely you can't meet me. That's right. And you heard me talk, no way. He was afraid. Yep. But in taking that, in, in that conversation with God and in trying, and that's that personal experience, he developed that trust in God. And, and what, what came from that conversation is exactly what you were just saying, is God said, I'll be with you. Because Moses says, I, I, I stubborn. Are you crazy? And God says, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And that's what God will say to you if you'll spend time with him, and if you'll talk face to face with him, and if you form a relationship, is I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. He's always with us. <coughs> Moses wasn't afraid because he knew God's call on his life. How do you know God's call on his life? Because God told him, right? Dude, I want you to go to Egypt, and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my children go, and I want you to lead them to Mount Sinai and worship me. God told him what his plan was for his life. Now, I'll tell you a secret. If you go to God and say, what's your plan for my life? He'll tell you. Pretty well that plainly. I want you to go to Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my kids go, go to Mount Sinai, worship me. Whatever it is for your life, he'll tell you plainly what it is for your life. You don't have to be afraid of him if you're doing what he called you to do, right? And if you're serving the purpose for your life, then uh, you'll also be enjoying your life. And finally, he knew God. He knew God, knew him personally, had met him face to face, had talked with him, was his friend desired to be with them. What's the fear? He knew God face to face. Yeah. And before he told him what to do, he worked out his trust issues with God. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. So he, he formed a relationship with him, got rid of his trust, the, the, the fear that drives him away from God. 
and then he could hear what he said when it's planted or his life was. Yep. Yeah. Same head. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? So basically what Kathy's saying is that you have to be able to trust God and know him better to be able to, or read his word or whatever, just know God to be able to hear him better. Yeah, the more you know God, the better you're going to hear him. Right. The more you know him, the more you trust him, the better you're going to hear him. Yeah. Absolutely. Mark? I think also the purer your heart. Mm -hmm the more potential you have for, you know, his word to flow through you. Yep. Versus, and there's, I feel like we can clog the spiritual arteries mm -hmm. of our soul with fear yeah. and other sins. Once you, you, can, can, once you yeah. pray and repent and forgive, get rid of all that junk. Yeah. You can, yeah. yeah. Which was also the beautiful thing earlier, talking about the praying a blessing over someone, that it, not just forgiveness over the blessing, I mean, isn't that what our Father does, is bless us, even when, when we offend Him, but when, when we sin, He's still blessing us and wanting to bless us. And by blessing someone that you've just forgiven, going a step further and praying a blessing over them, you're purifying your heart and opening up your heart to have the Father speak to you right. and to shower His love on you. Because I mean, Scripture tells us, forgive as we are forgiven. Right? And if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Well, it's praying the blessing and opening your heart and purifying your heart for the Father to speak to you. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of like this gentleman here um, who um, he, gave, he gave some of his money to someone else, and the Lord blessed him. Oh, yeah. The Lord blessed him with uh, whatever that you, you got from the Food, yeah, food, stamps. food stamps or something. So um, he blessed someone. This gentleman blessed someone, and the Lord blessed them in return. Yeah. And multiplied it. I love what Kathy has said many times. I love it, and I use it often. Is it's an identity thing, and in that prayer, we do what God does, and we identify with His nature because we're made in His image. And That's so right. It's still, I'll say, I'm a person who blesses. When you know the the accusation comes or the temptation comes to be mad or say something not nice, nope, I'm a person who blesses. That's right. I'm a person who blesses. And the accuser, Kendall was just saying, when the temptation comes, the, the accusing spirits will come, and the accusing spirits will try and insert themselves. And don't you want to be fearful? Don't you want to be angry? Don't you want to be bitter? Don't you? And that's exactly what you do is take take that thought and go, no, 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 no. Take it captive to God's word and say, I am not a person who is bitter. I am not a person who curses. I am a person who blesses. God did not give me a spirit of fear. He didn't give me a spirit of fear. Right? I have nothing to fear. I know my Savior. No. I don't, I, I'm not tempted by your fear. Thank you very much. Have a nice life. Bye-bye. Right? Bye-bye. That's right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice life. <laughs> so, again, talking to scripturally, um, some of the times when we're told to fear not, an angel of the Lord appears to Zechariah, who is the high priest of Israel. And an angel of the Lord appears, and Zechariah goes, Whoa! And he's frightened. And the angel of the Lord says, Fear not, Zechariah. Fear not, you have found favor with your God, and you will have a child. And who's that child? Jesus. John the Baptist. <laughs> close, close. Jesus' cousin, right? Jesus' cousin. But the angel of the Lord says, fear not, you'll have a child. Fear not, because of your faithfulness, you'll have a child. And in fact, they had, Zachary, or they had John the Baptist, who was a heck of a child. Luke 131, the angel of the Lord appears to Mary and says, you have found favor with the Lord. You will become pregnant and give birth to our Savior. Give birth to our Savior. You think Mary didn't have a right to be afraid? Yeah, Mary had a right to be afraid because Mary could have been stoned to death. Mary could have been publicly divorced. Mary, you know, an angel of the Lord's appearing to her going, hey, you're about to be pregnant. And she's like, no. No, right? Fear not. Fear not. 
one of the most often given commands of the scripture. Fear not, put your faith in. How about Joseph, right? The angel of the Lord appears and goes, hey, you know your bride, your uh, fiance that you haven't slept with, you've never been with, haven't had sexual relations, yeah, she's pregnant. You think Joseph couldn't have had some fear going on? Yeah. 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 Right? But the angel of the Lord says, fear not. Fear not. You're about to be the father of the Messiah. Of the Messiah. Fear not. And by faith, both Mary and Joseph said, okay, by faith. By faith. So Satan torments us with fears through things that we hear and through things that we see, right? Through things that you hear and through things that you see, Satan torments you. We need to turn our eyes away from evil. Turn our eyes away from evil so you don't see him, you don't hear him. Um, one of the examples, um, a person that we love very much, my wife and I, um, rented an apartment over off of uh, Wisconsin, or off of Minnesota, excuse me, and had um, weird events happening in the room. Weird events happening in a room of the house that they would hear sounds, they would feel a person there, they would, all, and the room was basically haunted. Ask us to come over and pray over the house, anoint the house with oil, um, and to get rid of that spirit, which we did. And as we, we blessed every room with oil, we put oil on the, the window seals, we prayed around the house, and when we left, there was peace in the house, and that room was settled down. I did a little research and found that a person had committed suicide in that room, and I'm, I'm sure that that's what the, the spirits were attacking over. But that room was free of any contaminants, any kind of evilness, any anything, for two, three weeks. And then all of a sudden, it returned. Well, it, that, the spirits don't just return without an invitation. You're watching horror films and watching and evil things on television and allowing those things into the house, and the spirits get their invitation back, right? They get their invitation back. And so that's how fear enters our lives, watching horror films and watching all of the evilness that goes on in the world instead of yeah. looking to our Heavenly Father, looking to what Scripture says and what Scripture tells us. Um, I, I never, ever watch horror films, ever anything. I, I spent 40 years on the street as a cop with people trying to kill me. I was never afraid of any of it because I didn't watch the horror films and the shoot em ups and the, right? What can men do to me? Because I know where I'm going. And that's, um, keep your eyes away from evil, keep them focused on our God, and, and we don't have to have fear. So fears that torment us, um, they're, everyone's got some kind of fear, of, or what? Yeah, so the, um, that, that's one of the examples that I, I use when I teach, um, and my bride's reminding me of it. Um, when, when you can miss out on an opportunity that God gives you, right? Um, I met Miss Cindy. We dated for three years. Um, three years, she was ready to get married after six months. We dated for three years. She was ready to dump me because I was scared to death to marry the woman, scared to death because she was going to grow three heads. I knew she was going to grow three heads. You know? <laughs> I knew she was. Um, so anyway, um, through much prayer and much uh, consideration and much everything, we finally got married 17 years ago. Uh, we're just about to celebrate our 17th wedding anniversary. It has been the best 17 years of my life, bar none. Zero questions. Um, had I continued giving in to fear and not followed God's lead and accepted the blessing that He had for me, I missed out on the best 17 years of my life. And probably, however much longer we've got, you know. You might not have been here talking. Yeah, absolutely. I, I probably would not have been here talking. Um, but 
if we can miss out on God's blessings by allowing accusing spirits to interfere with us. And that's what the little wedding couple is up there. New Year's Eve, this year is our 17th year wedding anniversary. New Year's Eve. Um, yeah, and we'll be on our way to Maui to celebrate it together. So. Hi. Yeah. Don't, don't give in to fear, because fear is, uh, fear, and that's, that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. Does the enemy care if he robs us of 17 years of happiness or joy? Yeah, he does. He loves that. He would love to rob me of 17 years of joy. Right? Go ahead. So I have a wonder. Um, I guess like, uh, you know, when you're talking about, uh, I find often that things I've maybe re experienced, read, or seen, and I don't watch horror stuff either, but I have seen, you know, this or that through life and whatever. And so I realize those things stay with me, you know, especially sure. if it's an image. But they stay with me and they come up, you know, and, and give me things to imagine when I'm starting to feel fearful about whatever, usually sure. a child. <laughs> but uh, so you probably just have to do these prayers over those. Yeah. Each one. Absolutely. Make a, one time. Exactly. Make a list and a yeah. pray over Absolutely. You make a list and you pray over them. Um, and and we have a trauma prayer that we take people through um, when you have trauma in your life and there are smells or sights or sounds that bring back trauma that you pray those away and cleanse them with the Holy Spirit. Um, the, one example uh, of just the kind of things that should bring me up, or I, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, I, I told you I spent 40 years on the street as a cop. I have seen a lot of misery, a lot of people killed, a lot of really bad things happen to people. One of the few difficulties Cindy and I have ever had is if I can't reach her on the telephone, if I call her on the cell phone and I can't reach her because fear immediately tries to grip me and something's happened to her, something's happened to her, something, and then it turns to anger. I answer the dang phone, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously. And, and so I had to learn to pray through that, but no, accusing spirits want me to believe that something's happened to Cindy. Nothing's happened to her. She just doesn't answer her dad gun phone, right? And to this day, she still doesn't answer her phone. Look at that smile on the wing. Um, but accusing spirits immediately want to jump in and beat us up and say, you know, yeah, something's happened. Oh, something horrible's happened. Oh, she's dead. She's been, oh, she got hit. I know, that's what happened. And that, yeah, that's exactly what happens. And and that is very real life for every one of us. Maybe not that example, but very real life that something will trigger and an accusing spirit will jump up and go, oh, something bad, be afraid. Oh, somebody's getting something you're not, be jealous. Oh, be bitter. That's what they do. That's what they do. And which is why we tell you, take these bookmarks for free. Take lots of them. Yeah. Right? Take lots of them. Have one in your sun visor, in your wallet, in your purse. And when the accusing spirit jumps up and says, Cindy won't answer her phone, something's happened to her, be afraid, you go, Heavenly Father, I'm hearing an accusing spirit that's saying, be afraid. And I listen for a second. I don't want to listen. Forgive me. And I forgive myself. Go ahead. What kind of fear is that? Where, like, cause I have that with my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like if they don't answer their phone, if their phone's been dead for like 10 minutes, I don't let it overtake me. <laughs> but um, sometimes that's like the first thought. It's like a fear of abandonment. Yeah. A, a fear of abandonment or a fear of something's happened to them. It's a it's yeah. fear. It's a fear. It's a fear. Yeah. It's a great yeah. question for God. Too. Yeah. I mean, okay. Why, why am I so, so tempted uh, to agree with fear yeah. about my kids? Right. And then going back to, to Leo's question earlier about, well, what's the Holy Spirit's answer to you? Is If you ask God, why, why does that set me off? Why do I have such fear over this? You'll get an answer. And so then you know that that's the next thing that you want to pray about. You know, that's the next thing you want to pray about. And, you know, I used to insist that I had absolutely no trauma after all those years on the street. 
Well, I assure you, I have trauma after all those years on the street when I can't reach my wife and it sends me spooling through the roof because I'm sure she's in an accident at 36 and seeing dead, right? That's pretty illogical fear. Yeah. Um, and so you go <coughs> through the trauma prayers, as I was talking about, and you get rid of that trauma and you give it to the Father and you allow Him to take it away and allow the Holy Spirit to fill your being with His presence. So when the accusing spirits attack people, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, or be jealous, or be bitter, or you can go, no, I'm in the presence of the Father, and yes. no, I'm a person who's blessed, yes. but I'm not a person who's bitter. Yes. I know uh, one thing, um, when fear or anxiety tries to come upon me, or if I am actually like doing it like fear and or having anxiety, I get like a signal physically, and then you know God will let me know, like you know, just stop, stop and pray. So that's what I do. Yep. It's, it's really. <clears throat> and that is the answer: stop and pray, right? Like, you don't even have to stop. You know, it's okay to keep walking down the road and pray, or yeah, driving yeah, down the road and whatever, no, and no, just Heavenly Father help me, right? Heavenly <coughs> Father help me. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, so many times going through the class, and they always speak that this is your hallelujah moment. And that's immediately changing it from a negative, just by going, oh, this is a hallelujah moment. I get to pray. That's right. I know what to pray about. You start, you say, you know, you're taking the negative and going, hallelujah. It's, it rates that instance. Become that's right. And then you have to try right. decipher what later it is. And, but I just think that's the blessing that we have of going to this Cold Springs. And, I agree. Yeah. Go ahead. Does this class, does uh, teach the trauma prayer. Um, we we don't have we don't do the trauma prayer in any of the teaching here, but we certainly have it here, and um, any of us can walk you through a trauma prayer if you need to. But you and, know how long to have it yourself. I'm sorry. You know how long to have it prayer yourself. Uh, no, you certainly have it yourself. I got, I don't have it right here with me at the moment, but I, we certainly make it available. To yes, you. you can you can administer to yourself. Yeah. yeah if you have had a trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The trauma yeah. prayer really involves. For me, and I've done it my one on one, going through how I'm remembering it. So the the sounds and the smells oh, yeah. and the, the feelings and the praying those things. And I'm praying yeah. through those things and allowing Holy yeah. Spirit and the blood of Jesus to wash those out of me so yeah. they don't trigger fear in me anymore. It may it, still have the memory, but it doesn't trigger the fear response. Yeah. Yeah. But it does have to be with a counselor or a prayer partner doing it because as you as you relive or experience a pain or a, a trauma, mm -hmm. the mind doesn't know that you're reliving it. it right. It's like experiencing it again, I and so you don't want to waller in it. You want to turn it over to Holy right. Spirit and get healing from it. I feel like I've kind of overcome a lot of it because I look at it now as like almost like a blessing, uh -huh. you know, that I went through it. Sure. Um, so I see that I'm grateful for it because it brought me to Jesus, honestly. Right. Um, but it's that fear for my family that I get from that. But I, I'm working through that, too, and my yeah. heart just feels so much better. But just in case something comes up mm -hmm. and I, it triggers it, it's, I just want, don't want to deal with it anymore, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Somehow... It yeah. is 8.30 already. I'm not sure how that happens. Let's go to 9 tonight. Let's go to 9 tonight. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I, I could keep going, but they, they tell us 8.30 to shut up, but then have time to pray with people. So, and I'm glad all of you came and that you shared. I hope that each of you um, received the message from the Father that you do on the way home. Let me yeah, close this in prayer. So Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for the time to be together with fellow believers, with people who are on the walk. Lord, I pray for an extra dose of faith tonight, for faith for every one of us, Lord, for belief, for faith, for knowledge, for knowing that we know that we know that we know your goodness and your presence and your love and your desire for good for us. Holy Spirit, I ask that each of us receive the message that you wanted us to receive or that you will reveal it tonight on the way home 
as we meditate on this. I thank you for your presence. Father, I thank you for your love. And I send each person away from here with your love, with your blessing, with an assurance of your presence. In Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.